So anyway, uh, we have a Heenan rude promo. It's the usual. An animal needs food to survive. The warrior will be a link in the food chain of this hungry beast. Although I did like rude calling warrior a guppy in the ocean of life. <laughs> and warrior promises rude a lesson in evolution, which would have been fun, actually, but he vowed to prove he was the ultimate animal. Okay, Rick Rude versus the ultimate warrior. A while back, we were talking about warrior matches, and I counted, I think, five good ones. Well, now it is six. Because yes. this match well, you know, was what's awesome. Funny is, what's funny is, I've mentioned this match before, because I saw this same match at a house show. Yeah, okay. And then okay. I saw it in Saturday Night's yeah. main event, and it was the exact same fucking match. That's when yeah. I really figured out this was bullshit. But, so, we've mentioned a thousand times in my fandom, I thought The Ultimate Warrior was awesome growing up. Then we go back, we've been watching these shows, and he's he's largely hideous, okay? But, my early memories of The Warrior... Like, think of the matches that I saw in the first few years of watching WWE, like every show. I saw Warrior and Hogan, which was a really, really good match. I saw a series of matches with Warrior and Ravishing Rick Rude. Mm -hmm. Warrior and Slaughter, like, we haven't watched that match yet, but Sergeant Slaughter was good. Yeah. I mean, that match was probably fine. Warrior versus Randy Savage in That's the, the, in the, the retirement match, which was a yep. fucking great match. So, quite frankly, I mean... I was right. <laughs> Everything I saw of him was good. And there's nothing you like to say more than that. Well, I mean, you know, he wasn't good. But you know what he is? He's the great Ocon. He's being carried by all of these guys. Let's see. And so, you know, as a kid, I thought he was great. Now I'm a grown-up. I realize Ocon is not great. But the point is, that's what we've got going on here. This was a very, very good match. All thanks to Rick Rude. Uh, Although, much. I would not say that Warrior was horrible. He was he was very capable of being carried by somebody who is good. Yes, I, I've noticed that in the last two matches that he's had, he's basically doing a Hulk Hogan match. Well, he's doing yes. every WWF babyface match, yes, including, exactly. including the Warrior Up, if you will. Yes, the, yes. the Shake Up is what he does. Yes. So, two stories of this match. First of all. We see Warrior just blitz everyone, and once he gets going, no one ever seems to have an answer. But Rick Rude is the one guy who beat Warrior at Mania for the IC title. He's apparently the one guy who knows Warrior's offense always starts with a clothesline. Because Rude ducked like a half a dozen clotheslines in this match. He always knew that clothesline was coming. He did his homework. What else is he going to duck? Well, apparently guy's no got one, three moves. No one else ever figured this out. <laughs> so, the other funny thing about this was... A warrior runs wild for three or four minutes, and then it's time for what in a normal match you would call the heat. And the heat is just Warrior misses his big splash. And he jumps 80 feet in the air and rude moves. And it's so hysterical watching Warrior, like a starfish, fall out of the sky into the mat and go crash. I laughed out loud and watched like five times. And then the funnier thing is, what you would call the heat lasted like two moves. Rude hit a belt shot. And then he went up top and came down and took the shot in the gut. They went back and forth the whole rest of the match. So Rude gets a sleeper at one point. He is threatening to put the warrior away. For some reason, the referee decides rather than lift this man's arm three times, I shall lift his big giant leg. I think warrior just wanted to shake his leg to indicate he was still alive. Eventually, they go brawling up the... Uh, uh, warrior hits the splash. Heenan breaks at the pin by pulling Warrior's hair, mm -hmm. which should have been a disqualification right there, but Warrior chases Heenan up the aisle. Everyone's brawling out there, and Warrior... i got to tell you a story before you get to the finish. What? Right. I'm not going to go over the whole SmackDown thing. I've done it on two shows already, okay? But there was a Daniel Bryan J Uso match, and I was watching it after it was over, and I knew that next week they were doing a cage match. And so imagine my surprise when the setup for the cage match is they're just brawling outside, not paying attention, and the ref counts them out. So I'm going back and forth with Dave. He's trying to justify a count out leading to a cage match. So these guys are fighting in a cage at SummerSlam. And so when these fuckers are fighting outside the ring, I was like, son of a bitch, if they fucking do a double count out to lead to the cage match at SummerSlam, I'm going to be so fucking furious. Now, thankfully, they didn't, but they very strongly teased it. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, what I saw 
was Warrior winning by count out. Yes. But then everybody announced it was a DQ. Correct. What the fuck happened? Well, does it really matter? Well, kind of. What the fuck was the finish? Well, here's what happened. Warrior presses Rude over his head and carries him back to the ring. And that had to be scary, (laughs) being up in the air like that. But as he gets close to the ring, Heenan kicks him in the knee. So Warrior puts uh, Rude down, and he starts beating up Heenan in the ring. And that also had to be scary for a guy who did not like to have his neck touched. I mean, (laughs) Brian Pillman scared the shit out of this guy on Life TV, but he worked with the ultimate warrior here. So eventually, Heenan flees, the bell rings, and yes, we are told it's a disqualification of Warrior 1. It was dumb. Yes. We got to see uh, Rick Rude... Uh, sell an atomic drop. Two, yes. And then a reverse atomic drop. That's right, that's right. And they were both fantastic, and Warrior gave him no room to to sell. I would, could have watched this on, on a loop for an hour. <laughs> that, that's pretty much doable. It, it's comical. Yeah. Also, I, here we are in 1990, and uh, Warrior has uh, Bon Jovi's hair. Oh, there's more to uh, say about this, dude. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll get to his bandana, <laughs> oh, yeah. his fucking bandana later. I yes. got to say this about this warrior. There's a lot you can say about this guy. Sure. Much of it negative. But one thing I will never take away from the warrior is this fucker worked his ass off. Yep. He is fucking drenched with sweat. His paint has vanished off his face. Part of it was because he sucked, as we've talked about in the past. Like, everything he did expended way too much energy. But he just kept going. I gotta give it to the guy. He was a sweater. <laughs> Congratulations on your sweating, Mr. Yeah. Warrior. Well, you know, you don't sweat sitting. Well, it well, helps. Some people do. I but. mean, I've said it before. The one thing he could do very, very well is sell his ass off. Probably because he was often on the verge of, of, of a major coronary <laughs> event. But he's he, he was a great seller. If you love these video clips, head down there to the bottom right-hand side of the screen and click Join... For just $7.99 per month, you get full access to all of the episodes. Over 300 at current count. Full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Lance Storm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.